Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Darius, and this video is for the girls. A couple things before I start this video. I hate doing these little interjections, but I'm gonna go quickly. Um, a, I'm being very vulnerable in this video, so please like be nice to me. I'm just trying my best to be vulnerable with my audience. Um, B, if you want to skip to the point where I'm talking about the topic of this video, you totally can. I have no qualms with that. Um, I do eat for quite a bit in the beginning of this video, but as always, you can go look at the timeline or um, you can go look at the comment section and I'll have the times posted for when I will be talking about what. Um, another thing is that I'm testing out this mic. Please let me know if my audio is good. And then finally, um, while I am talking about the topic of this video, I decided to take the liberty to speed up the video to 130%. You can always slow it down on YouTube if you would like to, but I assume that most people don't know how to speed it up or slow it down. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, a girl, I know you guys are probably like, dang, he think we owe, huh? But anyways, <laughs> I don't know if people actually know how to do that. So I decided to speed it up because I am having a couple pauses in there. You know, because I really want to think about what I'm saying. So if you want to slow it down, you can always do that through YouTube. But I decided to speed it up. If you guys do not like that, please let me know immediately and I will not ever do it again. Um, but yeah, those are all the things I have to say. Let's get into the video. Now, a couple things. Um, my hair looks crazy right now. So I have it in the thing a little. I don't know what this is called. Um, we are testing out, again, the new mics. I didn't have done it on my channel yet. But the point is, is that I don't know if this is working right now. I'm still trying to figure out the levels and the volume. Number three, it's very gloomy outside. I'm hoping that it's enough light. Um, number four, we are at McDonald's right now. We're in the parking lot. Um, and I'm about to go try the mambo sauce. I'm actually starving. This is the first time I'm eating today, which is terrible. I should have eaten a long time ago. Um, it's currently 4 p.m. And um, yeah, so I think I said everything that I needed to. I think that they still have the mambo sauce here. This is going to be a deep discussion today, by the way, guys. Um, I already have it planned. I don't know how in-depth I'm going to go, but... We're going to see. Um, I, I'm, I, should I ask them to make it fresh like my mom would do? I'm scared. You guys know that I can't do it. Um, let's find out if that's... Um, Cause they always like look crazy. Okay, you guys are just gonna be here for the whole process. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness. Should I just get a 10 piece nugget? Uh, I'm gonna go on the inside one. Okay, here we go, here we go. Hi, welcome back to all of you using our mobile app today? No. What can I do for you? Can I get a um, a ten piece nugget meal? You want that medium or large, hon? Can I get it large? And then can I get a sprite? That is not what I said. Hang on. The large sprite? Yes. Do you need any sauce with that? Yeah. Can I get um? Can I actually get? Two mambo, two sweet and spicy jams, and um, a buffalo. Is that it? Um, yes. And can you make that fresh, please? Make that what? Can you make it fresh, please? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, she's at the other, like, thing. Am I supposed to go? She didn't, like, tell me a total, like. <laughs> and I'm glad, because some places be having cameras. They be like, and so they can look at you. Oh, wait, where's my wallet? This is scary, guys. I said, can you make it? She said, <laughs> wait. <laughs> this is actually so funny. Thank you. How are you today? You need your receipt? Um, no, th yes, please, actually. Hi. Here you go. Thank you. I didn't know if she was saying, how are you doing today to me or the, the people on the <laughs> thing. So I just didn't say anything. Um, do you think that, okay, so question, if you actually work at McDonald's, do you, or like anywhere, and somebody asks you to make it fresh, are you doing that? Are you just like saying, yeah, yeah, whatever? Because I feel like, is that a thing that they do? Cause I wouldn't be, would I be making it fresh? I don't know. Um, it just depends, but I just feel like, I don't know if I would actually do that. Um, and I, I want to tell you, this is actually so funny. She said, I'm just trying to make sure they're not coming up to the window as I'm saying this. I said, can you make that fresh? 
and she said, uh, you said what now? She said fresh. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't say that, but she did say you say what now. And I said, oh, uh, can you make that fresh? I'm scared. I should have said, I'm doing a TikTok video. So unless you want your location to be blasted into oblivion, <laughs> that's what my mom does. Um, she doesn't say that, but she does say I'm doing a video. And I think that's so cringy and weird. Um, but I should have got like a little shake. Like I feel like I'm feeling a shake, even though it's cold outside. I want like a little like shamrock, a shamrock shake. Um, I'm hungry. And I will be eating for the first portion of this video. I haven't had nuggets in a long time. Like, I really don't ever eat nuggets. Now, if these sauces are nasty, it's going to be your guys' head. Because um, I wouldn't be here without the sauces being here. Um, and everyone's talking some... I don't know if everyone said it was so good or not. I actually haven't heard any reviews on it. I didn't even know that this was a thing until my mom did a video on it. So I guess I'm going to go and try it. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. We're gonna have a deep discussion. I'm having a McDonald's Sprite is the best Sprite. I don't know if you guys think that the same or. Oh, I thought she was coming. Oh, they made it fresh. They ain't playing. They made it fresh. This has been a few minutes. Um, and they looking at me talking to the camera. Um, this Sprite at McDonald's just hits different. It has just some sort of like a has a little bit of a, a tinge, a little bit of a, a sparkle, a little bit of a, an a acidity, um, and it really just hits the throat. The cor Ooh, I can't be clapping like that on this <laughs> with my mic. Um, it hits the throat just the correct way. So I'm excited for this meal. I guess I asked for it to be fresh, and they didn't play. Okay, I didn't film him giving me the food, but... They gave it to me. It does feel warm. I don't know if it feels piping hot, but I sit, sat there for it, uh, long enough for it to be piping hot. Um, I don't know whose car this is, but we about to park right next to it and film this video. Um, okay, so as I'm opening this food, let's talk about something. If you work at McDonald's or you have worked at McDonald's, I don't know if this is the right angle. Let me know. Um, if you have worked at McDonald's before, um, or you've been like a general manager of McDonald's or any kind of connection to uh, McDonald's. Why is it that like in 2015 or so, 2016, like all of a sudden the sauces started costing money, but they cost different prices at different locations. Some locations don't charge for the sauce. Some locations do. Um, and then it's like, so then I'm wondering if it's like a, a, a corporate, not a corporate, but like a, a locational thing where like they are losing money on their sauces. So they need to like get revenue more that way or something like that. I don't know if it was like a whole McDonald's across the, the world kind of thing or I don't know. But I'm not playing. They made my stuff fresh. Like I, I just, I think I'm gagged because like, I don't know. I would just think that they wouldn't make it fresh. Like even if I said like, can you make that fresh? Like they'd be like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll make it fresh. Yeah, fresh is just gonna get. Maybe they, they kind of ate that. I don't know. Am I being rude to, to um, fast food workers by assuming it wasn't going to be fresh? Um, the smile will not be fresh if I don't have the right amount of... Ooh, everything is fresh and hot and ready. Where's my... So oh, they gave me the right amount of... Yeah, they gave me the right amount of sauces. They kind of ate this. Um, what is this man doing? I saw, oh, I thought I saw him punch the air. Anyways, um... Okay, let me put this in here. I'm not in my car right now because um, my car, the tags aren't registered right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need to figure that out. Um, let me get these sauces out. Is this, why is no one talking about the sweet and spicy jam? I've only ever heard about the mamba right now. Like, I feel like everyone's talking about the mamba, the mamba, the mamba. I don't eat nuggets very often. Um, I just It's just not my thing. Um, people love McDonald's nuggets. And if I am eating a nugget, I'm usually eating it with sweet and sour sauce. So we're going to try the sweet and spicy jam. This is a little interesting. Is this like, is this four nuggets? Girl. Sweet and spicy jam and then the mambo sauce. I, this mambo, I mean, mambo sauce to me looks like barbecue sauce. Somebody needs to tell me what it is. Should I try it with the fry first? I think I'm more of a fry person. Um... I'm gonna try to keep it up so you can see this. The jam is very jammy. I don't know if you see that or not. It's like, this consistency is very much like, uh, um, 
jam. <laughs> um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Very sweet. Only a, a little bit spicy. Now that's with mama sauce. Hmm. Interesting. They're both good. I'm trying to figure out which one's better. I don't know, this is so weird. It's so, um, the consistency is so interesting on this. It's literally like, um, it's not like jam. I'm trying to explain it. I guess it's like jelly. Jam is a different cons consistency. Oh my God. This is such an interesting, I'm always so weird like filming videos by myself. Because I'm just not used to it. Um, okay, so my verdict is, let me give it a rating. Wait, let me take this bite again. Okay. Both sauces to me are very sweet. But this one is like the jam is a lot more sweet. Um I take it back. I it's really tangy too, the, the mambo sauce. I think that the mambo sauce is better. So it's not just sweet. Um I wish the sweet and spicy jam was more spicy. Mm. So, I give the sweet and spicy jam, um, mm, probably a, a five or a six out of 10. The mambo sauce, I'll give a seven. I need I need fast food places when they make spicy things. And let me know if you agree. I need them to make things like okay. This is for the the spicy girls who really want to say they like a lot of spicy food, but like it's not really that spicy. It has like a hint of spice. And then I need them to make one that's like if you can actually take spice, like this is spicy. You know, I feel like everything is centered around people. Like, the, this is a hoax. Spicy? Really? This is that spicy? This is, like, not spicy at all. Now, my favorite sauce at McDonald's is sweet and sour. I never got anything other than sweet and sour. I used to not like it though, but I don't remember what I used to get. Does anybody remember when they used to eat and they had that um, it was like a like an Asian zing, not Asian zing, but like a 
Mm. Oh. Like a sweet chili sauce. That was so good. Mm. Person next to me is looking at me. Looking at me. Can you guys hear any of my crunches? Now, see, the thing is, here they um, they um, said that you, they would charge you, but then they didn't. I don't think so. Did I pay for these sauces? Because I got six of them. Five, rather. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like McDonald's fries, hands down, are just so good. And while other fries are good at other places, um, they're not as addicting as McDonald's. Now I'm reading today. This is an actual mukbang. Isn't that crazy? You know where the timestamp is for you to watch if you want to hear the what I have to say today. Mind you, if you stick around for the whole thing, um, it's gonna be a little all over the place. Because I have a topic, um, but I don't know what I quite want to say yet. I mean, these fries are so good. I'm trying to hold it up for you guys, but I'm trying to devour at the same time. You know these fries good when I'm grabbing the, the, the fries that fell off the bag. I mean, off the thing that I fell in the bag, I'm getting them out. Don't play with me. I'm getting my fries. I promise you, I could literally, like, like no other place, tear up a McDonald's large fry. I just don't know what it is. It's the, like, especially when they have the ample amount of salt, and today they're eating. I don't know if you can see that, but look at the salt on my fingers. That's how you know they ate today. Because sometimes they don't be putting enough salt on it. Now, I'm going to replace the sauces in here. All right. I don't know, I'm trying guys. Um side note, I have been thinking about um making a video on my TikTok about the Israel-Palestine situation. Now, I'm not going to do it in this video, but I do know that a lot of people are severely un uneducated about the topic. Um, and I don't know everything, but I know enough. Hmm. And I don't think this is as complicated as people say that it is. So, while I'm not gonna say anything in this video, 
what I do encourage is that everyone watching this video, if you so much as, as have a stance on it, I mean, right now, if you have a stance on it, make sure you know everything. Because I didn't know about any of this at all until recently. Like, I, I knew, obviously, something was going on, like, the last... Because at my school in Arizona, there are definitely some protests last year. And um, I knew about those, but I didn't know about the, the situation or the topic. I kind of just, like, stood back. Um, which is never a good thing to do. You, you know, when people are protesting... There's a means for, like, where's the reason why they're protesting? So, this time I took the time to educate myself on the topic. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, but I'm smacking. This stuff is sometimes just hitting the fries. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do it to him. I don't mean to do it to him. But this man in red behind me. What is he doing? Wait. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I can't be laughing like that. On this mic. Um, I'm not trying to film him. I'm trying to film me. But I'm looking in the screen. I just don't know what's going on. Do you guys know what's going on or no? Mm. Right now it seems like a lot's going on though. So and I don't know what to do. Um, I, I can't see very well. I can only see what's in my screen. I don't know if he's like dancing or... So, anyways, um, Now, I don't know if I'm going to eat all these nuggets. Isn't this so weird for a video like mine to just not be talking? Um, and I'm almost at a standstill because, I don't know, some people like me to eat and some people don't. Um... You know what? I'm going to be dumb. Because I know y'all want to hear the tea. Um, like I said, I'm going to be all over the place in this video. Um, let me get a, a refresher for my palate. Wow. Just the right amount of like oomph, you know? Now, here we go. Let's break it down. As we are like a million minutes in this video, I'm fi finally starting the topic. Now, I was kind of going through, let me tell you how I got to this point. I was kind of going through um, some of the ideas I have written down over the years of video ideas that I should do. And yesterday, while going through these ideas, I saw one of them that was more recent. I don't remember writing this down, though. But it was talking about my um, thought process of all things college. And really just, like, I ask, asking myself, like, now that I'm here, was it all worth it? Where I went, what I experienced, all of those things, the people I met. Was my four years of college, you know, other than my degree, 
was it um, a worthwhile experience? And not only that, but did I choose to go to the correct place? And my answer is no, okay? Now, I don't know how many people care about this topic. I won't be going into like full, full, full depth because I'm going to be talking about this topic at another point in time, I know. But basically what I mean by that is that I went to a PWI, if most of you guys, I think you guys know that. Um, And a PWI stands for Predominantly White Institution. Not everybody knows what PWI stands for. A lot of and most of the universities in the United States of America are PWIs. Um, They house predominantly white people, um, or the majority of their student body is, is white. Now, you may be asking yourself, I always have to, to catch myself because sometimes I forget that there are people who are not black watching, you know, both my channel and my mom's channel, right? Um, and I don't really think about that, which is so weird that I don't. Like, obviously, this is the internet. Everybody's on here. So if, if you are ever up offended by what I say, it's not because I'm obviously not trying to offend anybody. It's really what I experience in my point of view as a black person. And I always think that I'm talking to other black people. Um, when not everybody is black, right? I want to like obviously preface that. So if you aren't black, um, please just listen and like try to understand where I'm coming from or what I'm saying. Um, because then I feel like it would look, it's going to look bad if I don't, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to start. So essentially the reason why it's important to choose your college correctly, and especially in my case is because from the beginning, I, um, have always my entire life been surrounded by white people. And if you don't understand why I'm saying that, you're probably thinking, okay, well, and what about it? Um, But that's typically coming from a point or a place of comfortability. You probably typically have grown up around other people who look like you or who are like you or whatever the case may be, right? But um, if you are somebody who grew up and you didn't have that base, and there's certain different, like, there's other categories that this can be under, but specifically when we're talking about race, if you grow up around a race that, and and there's not many people of your race um, in that area, which we have to think about America being, you know, a very different country than a lot of other places. I I often forget that there are so many countries and continents where people are homogenous. Obviously, there's going to be people who are, like, from other places, but, like, there's no place um, like the United States of America when it comes to um, people from all different parts of the world. Um, That being said, my whole entire life, I've grown up around um, white people. And I think that partially that has shaped who I am and and what I think or and how I think today. Um, If we go back to the beginning, I thought nothing of it, obviously, growing up. Because you don't think about skin color or race or whatever. I feel as though I make it seem like I didn't know anything in high school or middle school or whatever about being black or what it meant to be black in this video. And that's definitely not the case. It was just more I... Where I am right now, I'm miles and miles ahead of what I was at that time. So to me, it seems like I knew nothing. So I did know things. I just didn't know nearly as much as I know now. The first time I thought about skin color or race was probably like in elementary school. When most people around you are are white um, and you aren't, you become like othered. Obviously, like like that's self-explanatory. Like your kids, your kids and... You don't see all black people very often, and now you have your this person in your class, he's black, um, yada, yada, yada. Now, there was not no black people at my elementary school. We had other black people, but we were definitely very, very much in the minority, right? And so um, I had to experience, like, I always bring this up. Like, for example, when we would watch a movie in class. Now, this, these are things I want you to think about um, as, a, as either a person who grew up around people who looked like you or as a person, as a, uh, as a white person who doesn't understand why somebody being black may have affinity towards, is it an affinity? I don't know if that, that word is used correctly, but um, may have an issue or some kind of problem growing up or being around ex- almost exclusively white people. Um, when we would watch a movie in class um, or like anything where we would need to have the lights off, when the lights would go off, it was like a long-standing joke of like, where did Darius go? And I know you guys are like, okay, that's insane. Cause like, this is 2023, I'm almost 23 years old. Like I'm I'm so different than I was in elementary school. And obviously like, if that ever happened to me now, it'd be a crazy experience. And I'd be like, okay, you guys did a lot. But as you, you being in elementary school, you have to remember this is 2000 and what, six, seven, whatever. When they would turn the lights off and people would make the jokes of where did Darius go? That's when I, re- that's when I realized I'm going to experience things that they're not going to experience. I'm going to be othered in, in whatever way, how, what, what, no matter how small or big, I'm going to be othered in some sort of way. And at that point, I didn't know about 
the bigger issues, right? Because again, I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm like seven or eight, um, whatever. And I hope that like people actually, I know I'm all over the place all the time, all the time, but I hope that you guys actually internalize what I'm trying to say. Um, and so yada, 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 I grew up in, in my public schools or whatever, um, for my whole, up until date, to date, I've been, um, all my schooling has been in majority white spaces. Um, and when I was in high school, um, I still didn't have like a really good concept of whiteness and of blackness and of my, what my experience would be as being a black person. Um, in society, I had no, I was not the Darius that I am today, which is very, 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 very vastly different than I was when I was growing up. Um, but one of those examples, this is another thing that's just popping in my mind. I remember, um, like being at my friend's house and there was this, this boy who like, I wasn't really super, super close to, but we were all, you know, we were all in the same, like, um, graduating class. We didn't graduate yet, but we were all in the same what class, I guess you would call it, um, in school. And it was around 2015. Um, and I don't know specifically what, uh, situation it was. I don't know if it was 2015 or not. I'm just like making up that number, whatever, whatever point it was, we were talking about Black Lives Matter. And I think it was like some kind of Facebook post by one of my classmates who was like, you know, X, Y, and Z resisting and just listen to police officers kind of thing. You guys know exactly where I'm going with that. And I was like, huh, like that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Cause at that point, I mean, now thinking back, I didn't even know, think that I was, um, thinking about or not, I don't want to say the word pressed, but like, I wasn't thinking about any of that kind of stuff. Like I wasn't really on social media like that. I feel like I was on Facebook, you know, back and during those days. And I wasn't like super educated on a lot of things. And again, I'm growing up around white people. My friends are white, mostly like there's other people, other ethnicities, but not not a lot of them are black. I had a couple black friends. Right. And so you have to think about like, if you're not seeing it online or you're not like paying attention to it online or whatever, um, you may not have like a super, super strong opinion. But I knew at that time, like when, when it came up, um, about black lives matter, I was always like, okay, well, how can you just say that these people were, if they would just um, um, stop resisting or whatever the case may be? Again, all of those thing, things that we hear now that are like just set in stone into um, people who are anti Black Lives Matter, those things were um, said. And it was the, 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 that was the first time I was hearing those things. And I was like, this is insane and crazy. And I'll never forget the boy who did this because I was just like, you, like, that's a lot. Um, but those things happened to me. And I was always, I always had something more foot more feet in the race. Is it feet? I had more to lose in that kind of a conversation, which I didn't even know. I'm, I'm Obviously, I was thinking that because, like, I'm black. Like, it made me think about the perspective of things differently. It was like, okay, everyone around me is white. I'm black, and we're, we're talking about something like Black Lives Matter, and people who are supposedly my friends or in my class, who I haven't thought much of, like, poorly about, they're now you know, saying things that I don't agree with and it has to do with skin color. And this is the first time that's like ever really happened to me um, at that period of time. Um, but again, I didn't like, it wasn't like I was like super, super um, in and, and delved into like my black experience. Um, it wasn't until um, probably my senior year in high school. My senior year in high school, I moved to, um, I moved to here and I graduated from Mason High School. And while it was a predominantly white institution, there was a large, there is a large population of Indian people as well as, I, I know there's Indian and Asian. So I want to say down the line, it was white, Indian, Asian, black for like, in terms of like how many people were in the school. Um, I want to say there was like a hundred or so black kids total in the school. I don't know if that's a stretch or not. I want to say that's what it was. There was about a hundred hundred black kids total. This, this school had about 4,000 students. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to show you my journey. It took me a long time to get to where I am today, but I just want to show you my journey. So not, not nothing specifically race related happened during that point, but I think that things were happening to me, which I won't get into detail, that I felt like were because I was black. And um, not many things like really opened my eyes until I got to college, but that's when Darius started to change. I did a, a complete 180 in the opposite direction. Again, I was never, ever, ever like crazy it was, it was more just, I was, I didn't know my, I didn't know things is all I'm going to say. I didn't know about a lot of things that I should have known about a lot of things that I, um, had to educate myself on, um, when I like turned like 19 or so. And so when I got to college, that's when I became, I, I have always been black my entire life, obviously. Right. 
but I've always been young and black. And obviously right now you're going to say, you're still young and black. I am still young and black. But I was young, black, naive, surrounded by white people. Um, and once I became black and older, I decided to, and, and, and obviously the world changed. We got like, not that like we didn't have social media before when I was in high school, but the whole dynamic just changed when I got to, to, to uh, college because obviously we had the George Floyd situation happen. But not only that, we had just gone through a, a, or we were in the middle of a global pandemic. Everyone was at home. Everyone was like doing, spending a lot of time doing a lot of different things. Um, and we were online. And by me being online, I really like, and I, I, I not blame, but I credit this to TikTok. And I know everyone's like, TikTok is so bad, but it really, really, really um, has educated me on a lot of things. And no, not just like me listening to people and what they say. It has opened up the opportunity for me to research, to figure things out. Um, I want to say TikTok is one of the main reasons why I took, um, I, I took African American studies as my minor um, because I was so um, interested in all of this stuff that I had never learned about never was talked to about. I didn't have um, a lot of black people to experience things with or talk to um, things about. And um, I wanted to know why I had not learned the things that I was learning on TikTok in school. And so that is part of the reason why I was motivated to take African-American studies as a minor. Um, and upon doing so and upon, you know, finding out things that I would not have ever found out through TikTok, um, I became the person that I am today. And I'm very, very... Um, um, I wouldn't say very, very, I'm educated on, um, not the whole world, but really about the black experience, um, in the United States from the, the inception until now. And it has really shaped the, me as a person. Um, I, I've completely, my whole worldview has just changed. I think it's so interesting. Um, but, but that being said, it really changed my experience at this PWI because I, I although Darius Gaskin had been at PWIs, his whole life. Now it just hit different with knowledge comes power. And, <laughs> but I, um, with knowledge comes power. And I really started to think of things differently. Um, I started to notice that my experience being black in, uh, uh, at the university of Arizona was not going to be one that I thought it was. Um, I don't know how much I want to explain, but in this video, but I, uh, I, I went to the university of Arizona um, with no family. I knew nobody in the state of Arizona. I knew nobody on that part of the country. Um, we didn't have, I don't have family like that over there. Um, I really never like, I had never been away from home like that. Obviously this is a big, big, huge thing for a lot of college students who are moving states away out of state. You know, it's really a, a big culture shock to, to leave your family, leave all you've known, especially when like you go to a, a college where there's not a lot of people who you went to high school with, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of people experience that, but experiencing that while being black at a PWI is adds even more to it. And so when I got to the, the University of Arizona, I think my issue was when I was younger, um, was that I didn't understand the implications of what it means to be black. And I keep on saying all this over and over, but that being said, when I got to the University of Arizona, Arizona I wanted to join a fraternity. Um, and the reason why I wanted to join a fraternity, I actually don't know why I wanted to join a fraternity. I don't even know why, like what, what, I think it's when I was like looking up like people who had went to the University of Arizona, et cetera, et cetera. I realized that it was a heavy um, Greek life school. A lot of people were involved in Greek life. And so I was like, okay, well, let me just do the process to go do it. And um, during that time, I, for the first time ever, was really around a certain type of white person. And I know this is crazy. If you, I'm going to get, I'm going to start going a little bit deeper. Um, I was around a certain type of white person. And what I mean by that is that like with, being with the other men, when you, when you rush, you like rush for a fraternity or you rush for a sorority. Um, and I was obviously rushing for a fraternity and I had to have interactions with people, um, with other guys who majority were white, majority came from, not majority, but a lot of them came from wealthy families. Um, um, from maybe Phoenix, Arizona, like they were close in state maybe. Uh, but what I noticed about them, and this is when I started to change my view on just everything. Uh, obviously at the same point, I'm on TikTok. I'm learning a lot about, about different things. I'm seeing black culture being emulated emulated in these group of men, you know, very heavy hip hop, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know what kind of person I'm talking about. I hope. Some of you don't. 
Um, but then on top of that, they, I just knew in my heart of hearts that these people were saying the N word. They are, they're being, I'm sure they're saying it in songs. And I've had, I have plenty of, of, um, stories about that in my college experience as well of me actually being there. But at this point I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I, I, I thought indifferently towards white people in general. I thought indifferently. Right. And the reason why I thought indifferently towards white people was because, again, all I ever knew was just growing up around white people and whatever. But then when I started to see the historical atrocities of the United States of America and not just the ones you learned in school, obviously, I learned about slavery. Okay, everyone knows of slavery. Right. But when I started to learn the ins and outs of the United States and where, how we got to where we are today and the amount of things that have been swept under the rug. Um, and these are not I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist. This is real factual information that you can look up anywhere. The, 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 when I found out that I wasn't being taught these things, that was jarring to me. And it was coupled with the fact that I was still at a PWI and I was seeing people that, and it took me back to high school when my friends who I knew, um, you know, I didn't know their opinion about something as simple, as simple, and yes, I do say simple, as Black Lives Matter. Like the phrase B Black Lives Matter, the fact that my, the people that I had surrounded myself with not people, this is one per one guy, but the point is, is that that opened up like, okay, this is just one guy who's my, who is my friend, but like, they're not super, super close, but he's my friend, and he doesn't agree with the term Black Lives Matter. Um, that made me think like, who else is also like that? Um, and then when I, again, when I got to college, it was um, that same thing with the George Floyd situation and whatnot, and I realized that this was just going to be a crazy life. This is going to be crazy because if you couldn't objectively look, like, look at that and see what was wrong with not, but the, not just that situation, because I think a lot of people were on the same, same accord of like, oh, he was murdered, you know, this is bad, da 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 da. But it was specifically the fact that he was an unarmed, the umpteenth unarmed black person. And I say person because we, we, we often neglect black women when we're talking about police brutality, and I don't wanna ever do that. So he's the umpteenth unarmed black person in the United States who has a uh, second class citizenship by being killed for no apparent reason. I mean, the, the, the thought, I, I can't even like get into it. Whatever, the point is, is that it was an atrocity and people agreed with that, but did they really make the connection? Did they really make the connection that this man, this happened to this man because he is black? It wasn't just a, oh, this man happens to be black and he was killed by a police officer. No, this happened because he was black and this is a, a root problem. This is just the surface of a root problem that we have intertwined in this country. And I think a lot of people started to educate themselves, white, black, or anything in between during, during um, the period of, of um, uh, quarantine. Um, I know a lot of people who, who started their kind of like realization of our history through TikTok, and through having a lot of time on their hands. Um, and when I rushed a fraternity for the first time, it was my first week, it was the first week before school started. They would do all the rush that week. It was blazing hot in Arizona. I have to add all this extra stuff so you know that what I was really going through. Is this man waiting for somebody? Like, I don't know, like I'm doing too much, but I just can't, like, I don't know what's going on. Whatever, it's none of my business. Um, but basically I had to um, do all of that with rush. And at the end of the week, after spending hours and hours walking, mind, mind you, in 100 degree weather, walking from different houses to different houses, and they're not close to each other all the time, um, walking in this weather uh, and, and having these small talk conversations with people I don't have really anything in common with. Um, and I was, I was talking to these people and they're talking about sports, something I'm not into. They're talking about, you know, the, you know, think of a frat guy. I thought in my mind, I thought that that was all fake. Like I thought that like 21 Jump Street or like what is it called? Neighbors or whatever the movies are that, that show stereotypical frat people. I thought that that was fake. No, 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 no. If you go to a school where Greek life is like prioritized, it's like actually, you know, popular and a lot of people are in Greek life, AKA um, the University of Arizona. Sorry, there's a guy on a motorcycle and his um, speakers are so loud. I don't even know how that's possible being on a motorcycle, but whatever. Um, anyways, so... Um, the, the concept, what was it? I lost my train of thought, guys, because of this motorcycle guy. The concept of me, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I have to think about what I was going to say. So um, at the end of this week that I did this rush process, I didn't get into a fraternity, um, which to me was unheard of because I, I didn't think of that being a possibility. Uh, that, that kind of concept didn't, didn't cross my mind at all. I was like, okay, I'm going to rush. I'm going to get into a fraternity and everything's going to be that, that and that on that. And then I didn't get into one. And I'll go into more de detail about that in a, a later video about like that whole process. That literally was jarring for me. Um, I felt like it was one of the lower points of my life. And you're, you're thinking, oh, wow, you, 
didn't get in the fraternity and you cried, mm, boo hoo. But really, what happened was, oh yes, I'm kind of giving like a. Anyways, um, what happened was I was obviously feeling a lot of different emotions that I could not um, comprehend at the time. I had literally, I'm not joking, one week prior than me finding out I didn't get into a fraternity, I had literally just been dropped off across the country with no support group, no family, no friends, no nothing. I know nobody in this state. I'm a fresh 18 years old. I don't, um, was I 18? I think I was 19. I don't remember if I was or not. Um, I've, I've been dropped off. I don't have a support system or support group. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a foreign place. I um, don't know anybody. I just had to put go out of my comfort zone and put myself out there for to like so many different guys. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, where you from? Oh, uh, yeah. What you like to do? What are your hobbies? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you had to, um, I'm not even say what kind of questions they said because it was literally like so like disgusting and gross and weird. You have to think about think of a typical frat guy and just make up a question that you think that they would ask that was like childish. Every single one that you can think of, they said it, um, and it was the craziest things. And I was like, okay, this is obviously not my vibe, my crowd, my group. I want to get into a fraternity. I um, I like there were some that I really liked and that I wanted to be in, and some that seemed to have interested me as well. And then I didn't get into them. And um, I'm starting school soon. I have to. I'm moving in with a roommate. We have. Um, 30 square feet to share Um, like you know what I'm saying like all of this is stacking on top of each other and I'm just like this is crazy and I just remember I'm I'm in this heat like uh, what did I do what what school did I choose I didn't get into a fraternity I was like is it me that really makes you think retrospectively about yourself it's like I went to all of these places and I didn't get into a fraternity Um, am I like uncool do people not like me like am I like you start to think about oh is it me Is, is, is it me um, but anyways, the point is, is that I didn't get into a fraternity and that was devastating. But then, then I thought, okay, well, why didn't I get into a fraternity? Is it me or is it other people? Um, you know, cause I felt like my conversations were not all of them were good. Cause that's how it is with, with Rush. You've talked to so many people and it's just like, some people are dry and then they stay, they put you in these rooms for hours and hours and hours. Like you're, you're going and walking to different places and like going through to all these different houses and talking to all these different people for literally six plus hours in one day. So by the time you get to the sixth hour and you're talking to the, the 45th person, you're like, oh my goodness, like you know, you're not as giving as much energy. And so like, I do think the situation is flawed or like the way they go about it is flawed. Cause like, there's no way you can be your best self in, in hour one versus hour six and talking to all of these different people. And not only on your side being a, um, a P and M, which is a product uh, predominantly, um, potential new member, but also on the opposite side of people who are, are, um, talking to the people who are in the fraternity already. I've experienced both. Cause I did get into a fraternity eventually, which I'll get to later. But the point is, is that now that I am 20, about to be 23 years old and I finished college, um, and the amount of things that I went through in my fraternity, which if you guys want me to talk about specific things, I will. Um, I'll talk about one that's not, that wasn't in my fraternity. Um, um, I was, I was at a birthday party and, oh, the police is getting, dang. um, I was at a birthday party and if you guys don't know the song Caroline by, um, Amine, I was, I think it was playing it or something, right? And this is really scary. So we're drinking, right? Um, we're drinking and, um, I'm in a different room. Okay, not a lot of people there. I would say at this point, it's later into the night. Everyone's pretty drunk, you know. It's later in the night. There's probably like eight or nine people total because like the party had died down, like people were leaving, whatever. Eight or nine people total. Um, a group of four or five white people, not my close friends, um, um, but they were in the living room. It's dark. They had like party lights on and stuff or whatever. And the song Caroline comes on. Um, and if you don't know, there's, you know, I mean, he's black and there is a, there is, oh my, I'm sorry. I don't know what is going on, but there's ambulances everywhere and police officers. I hope everyone's okay. What does that say? Yeah, that's the ambulance. Oh, that's fire rescue. I don't know the difference. I feel like all ambulances look like they're with the fire department. Um, but anyway, so, um, um, basically he was in, this is the, the person whose birthday it was, by the way, he was a part of this group of five white people in the living room. And I'm in like in the hallway area and it's still dark in the whole, um, house or apartment or whatever um music is playing i'm talking to my friends who i came with and um in that song um it says the n-word and i i like i jokingly do this thing where if i know an n-word is coming up in this song i'm sorry this something is what is burning i don't know what's going on but i really hope everybody's okay um so the song is playing and i hear the the n-word about to come up because i know the song and everyone knows the song right and I'm like, you know, I put my ear out. I do this all the time as a joke to be like, you know, that it's kind of like a kind of humor you uh, grow into if like that's like your thing to, to be funny or whatever. You, it's kind of like a humor that you grow into being black around white people. It's like, oh, if I'm going to be black, I'm going to embrace it, you know, and be un- unapologetically black in front of white people. And then like that also becomes a part of you. 
obviously you are black, but it becomes a part of like, I, I always would be like, oh, like, you know, because all my friends know that they shouldn't be saying the N-word, my friends who are not black, um, that they shouldn't be saying the N-word. And so it's more of like a, oh, like, I'm the, yeah, huh, don't say it. Like, you know, whatever, right? But I know that they're not, my friends are not going to, right? Which is why I chose them as my friends. But um, in this particular moment, the boy or whatever, um, I have my ear out. <laughs> they can't see me, by the way. I'm not even in the living room. Um, I'm with my friends and we're kind of talking. Again, everyone is all pretty drunk. Um, I don't like really do it to be, do a spectacle, but I'm just like, I wonder if they're going to say it. Not thinking that they are. Tell me why I heard a chorus. La, la, la. Different pitches, different keys, different notes of the N word in every. I'm like, are you joking? Because again, everyone is drunk and everyone is not. And no one, I'm the only, no, I'm one of two black people there. Um, no, no black people are in the living room, right? Um, and I'm just, I'm, clo- I'm in close proximity, though. I can hear them. And the reason why I had my ear out was because they were singing the entire song up until the N-word. So I'm like, mm, I wonder if they're going to pause. Um, and lo and behold, they didn't. Yeah, lo and behold, they didn't. And I said, okay, that might be a lot. And so um, I ended up leaving like almost right after that. And just thinking they did a lot like saying the N-word. Um, and so actually there was, I'm getting a memory. The guy whose birthday party was, he had a friend there who I want to say was out of town or something. I mean, like was from out of town um, and he was there and he seemed the type to say the n-word like i just don't know what was in my spirit like i just felt like he would be the type I, he like came maybe came from somewhere where i thought that he might be conditioned to say the n-word i don't know what it was but the point is that he um was there and i thought that he was gonna say the n-word but it turns out he didn't say the n-word he actually paused he was the only one i think in the group who paused didn't say the n-word and the guy whose birthday was screamed it and i just remember going this is so crazy like why would he do that um whatever so i didn't say anything that night but the next the following morning i woke up um, and when I came to my senses, I said, I cannot let this get go through. I messaged him immediately. I said, listen up, buddy. I said, I don't know what you were doing last night, but I very much clearly heard you say the N-word. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, oh, like, I'm so sorry, bro. Like, <laughs> he's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I'm so sorry, bro. Like, I didn't even mean it like that, bro. Like, I was just singing this song. Like, I, I was super, super drunk. Like, I, I would never normally say that, but like, I was just so drunk. And I was just thinking, yeah, 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 that's crazy. Um, like, you can we don't know the excuses by now. I was drunk. I just, I, 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 I didn't know. And everyone's like always saying rightfully so that you, the things you say and do while you're drunk, you think and, and you think about while you're sober, you just don't do them. Um, if that word wasn't in your vocabulary, if you knew it was wrong to say that, you wouldn't do it whether you were drunk or not. Um, and so I said all that or whatever. He apologized profusely. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Or not that I didn't know, but uh, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to like offend anybody. I wasn't trying. I mean, I was drunk and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then he, um, um, needless to say, I was not invited to the next birthday party. Yeah. So, um, and I wonder what he thinks now. I haven't, I haven't seen him since. Um, we weren't super close, but he kind of wanted, you know, we had met and he probably, I'm sure he wanted like a big little, a big like extravagant birthday party. So I invited like everyone he like knew, but like also like, you know, people he probably wasn't super close to. Um, I think I was like a friend of a friend or something like that. But he, I think he actually ended up living behind me in my final year of college. Like this, this is past like semester. I don't know for sure though. That's a, a, a hypothesis. I think he lived like in a house behind me, but whatever. The point is, is that, um, um, that experience, all of these experiences, and I have a lot, lot, lot more of like just being black in my, in my school, um, and being surrounded by mostly white people. But really what, what made me come to these conclusions is being black, um, around white people in my fraternity. And I felt that our, my experience should have been different than, you know, being in my fraternity, um, because you're supposed to be brothers. Like there's this whole thing about Greek life. Um, and it made me think like, what I've experienced, the experience of things that I've experienced here at an HBCU. Um, obviously not, right? And so um, I often think, like, did I make a mistake in going to a PWI when, like, I can, I have so many things on my list. I'm sorry, again, like I told you this video was going to be all over the place. But I have so many things that I could talk about of my experience being black and how that has shaped me, not only just being black, and not only just being black in the United States of America, but being black in the United States of America, surrounded by white people. I think that that is such a unique experience that we don't talk about very often. There are, obviously, we're all, like, in a predominantly white country, but there's a lot of black people who grow up around other black people. My mom, for example, did, didn't even have any conversations, talking, like she never she knew of white people, but she just was only surrounded by black people her entire life until she was like in her early 20s. That's all she ever knew was black people everywhere. And I think that that um, experience is so different than being black and growing up around white people. That is just such a stark difference. And it takes you a longer time to get to um, your blackness and like what that means. I think, I think now younger generations might have it differently. Like if I had, you know, 
I'm saying like access to the internet, like I was born in the 80s or something. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, I obviously have access to the internet, but we, it just wasn't a topic like we talk about now, or maybe it wasn't as readily available, or maybe I wasn't looking for it, whatever the case may be. I was like 12, 13, 14 years old. I'm not going to like put too much pressure on myself. But um, I think that now being black and growing up around white people, you might be able to, through the course of like just being on the internet, be able to realize what things are okay, what things aren't, aren't okay. Um, oh, another thing I want to talk about quickly that I uh, really am, it's just a really, uh, not important part, but like important story um, element to the story is that when I was younger, I um, when I was in middle school, I wore color contacts. And I know you guys would be thinking, what? Like, that isn't, whatever, people wear color contacts all the time. But to this day, I always have a little bit of a raised eyebrow when I see black people with like super colored contacts. Now you can wear color contacts, I don't care. But for me, the reason why I have a raised eyebrow is because I know the reason why I wore co color contacts in middle school. It was because, subconsciously, it was because I wondered why my eyes were dark. And this is really sad. And this, may, this is part of the reason why I have uncovered and dismantled all of these things of whiteness and whiteness in the world and whatever. But I had, uh, um, I'm, I'm assuming just like this thought in my mind of like, why are my eyes not like colored like all my friends are? And I felt that I should have colored eyes. And my dad's eyes were haze, are hazel. They're still, they're probably chestnut. They're little, they're like pretty dark brown, but they're, they're still like brown. You know, I felt like my eyes are so dark that they almost looked black unless there was like a flashlight or a sunlight or whatever in my eyes. And my, I got my eyes from my mom. And the thing about it is, is that I didn't need contacts. That's the big thing. The only reason why I wore them is because I wanted colored eyes. There was no reason why, there was no other like, oh, um, there was no other like, I have a um, prescription and I need to wear contacts and I would just want them to be colored. It wasn't that. It was literally, I got them for, and I like literally would have to wake up 30 minutes extra because my I would literally be so crazy with putting in my eyes. And so I was like, I have to go, I can't like go to school without my eyes being colored now because I've been doing that for so long. Obviously people knew I had contacts because I grew up with these people. So they knew I was wearing contacts, but like, it was just so interesting. And then people would be like, your eyes are so different and weird. Like when I would take them, when I didn't have my contacts in. And it was also a crazy color. I don't even know what color they were. I think they were like, like a really like hazel, like greenish color. Not green, but like they were like hazel. Like, I don't know what hazel is. I don't know what hazel color is, but it was like a pretty light brown. And I know people are like, girl, what? Um, and that's actually so humiliating and so embarrassing. I thought I ate with my colored eyes. Um, and the reason why now, obviously being a 23 year old, I didn't know this when I was 12 or whatever, however old I was when I got them. Um, was because I had internalized anti-blackness of me, you know, want, wanting to have colored eyes. Um, and so that's why I am always like, huh, when I see people with colored contacts now, I mean, obviously it's probably different because most people, I'm hoping, most people who have colored contacts actually need contacts um, instead of my situation where I didn't need them at all. But, um, like, something like that I would never, ever, ever, ever do now. I'm just so much more into... And I'm sharing this and I'm being vulnerable because, like, who wants to admit that that they wore colored contacts to, to fit in with white people? Like, what? Oh, my God, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. But, like, that's the reality of what I did when I was 11, 12, whatever. And I, and I am so different now. And I really want to just talk about this experience because there are some people who are going through the experience of being black around white people or people who are young like that. And it's hard. Um, it's hard to find yourself. It's hard to understand your differences between you and your friends. It's hard to understand you know, concepts about the United States when the school's not teaching you about it, you're not having those conversations with your white friends. And so like, you may not know, it may take you a little bit longer to get with the times. Um, again, I don't know how it is gonna be now, like for, for black children around white people, because we have, because I think that if you were on TikTok, at, if I was on TikTok at 10 years old, I would probably already come across this naturally, right? But um, I just didn't have that when I was 10. Um, we barely even had social media like that on, on phones. You know, yeah, MySpace or whatever. I was never on MySpace. But the point is, is that, like, we didn't have those conversations. And and, um, and that, therefore, a lot of things happened to me. Um, but then also the opposite is when I figured out all of these things, I started to see more things that were happening to me and that did end up happening to me that I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, either this was because I'm black or this is because of, you know, black history in this country or X, Y, and Z. And I often get, um, like, I think my mom or, like, my grandma or whoever, because I was like, oh, here comes Darius again with the, the PC and this, this, and that. And, like, you know, Gen Z gets that all the time. It's like, we're so sensitive and yada, yada, yada. And the reason why we're sensitive is because we are seeing the atrocities that are happening every single day in 4K. Like, before you guys could see them, you know, as an adult, you would figure things out or whatever. But you only found them out through, like, certain avenues. And, um, and I think that just being young and, like, being able to see everything in real time happening right now and like learning about things that I have never learned in school and I know that my parents haven't learned in school and I know that a lot of black people and a lot of people in the country, period, have not learned in school. Um, um, it, it really, you know, shapes you when you are finding out about these things. And then to think about, I'm gonna use my platform to, to um, 
to educate people on different things. What's happening in Florida right now is is literally disgusting. Um, I don't know if you guys know what PragerU is. You probably don't. But PragerU is a um, an educational, put that in, in very heavy quotes, educational, um, like kind of animated um, uh, entity that makes content for children in schools. And it kind of like simplifies. Think of like the magic school bus. I don't know if the girls remember that. The magic school bus or something like that. That like it's supposed to be educational to kids and it's like a cool and cute and funny quirky kind of way to explain something to you. Um, Prager U has the videos like that, but they're on more serious topics. It'll be like um, Frederick Douglass or like uh, Martin Luther King or it'll be talking about heavily heavy race relation kind of situations. Um, and, and they would try to simplify it to children, right? But then it'll be like, overly simplified and overly crazy it, it like and i want to i just saw this yesterday frederick douglas was talking to these two kids the two kids are, are white kids um and they go back in time and meet him um and they talk about like you know slavery and obviously frederick douglas tells him he's, he's anti-slavery he's like we shouldn't have slavery blah, blah 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 and they're like yeah that's terrible that's horrible and the kids are like upset about it about slavery and he's like well you can't be upset about it because it was like a different time. We can't like judge and blame the people at the time for slavery because like that's, you know, that's what they knew. Like we're, we're judging the world right now based off of views and things from a long time ago. Like we have to give empathy towards, the, towards those people because like, yes, they like, um, they participated in chattel slavery and they um, literally for 400 years uh, decimated an entire culture um, and brought them here um, to do free labor for them. But, but, um, you know, they're nice people and like, and we can't judge them because like we think differently now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like, he also goes and says like, like, I forgot what he said. It was something like, we can't judge and blame them. Like, I'm, I feel bad. Like, obviously it's a horrible thing and I don't like slavery, but like, you know, it is what it is. And the kids are like, okay, like, oh, I get it now. Like whatever. And that is being currently, it is like, I want to say approved or whatever to be educational. Like we, those videos being shown to children in Florida, like how, how are you going to go about life letting people know that at some point in time, slavery was more justified because it was just a different time. It was like, a, oh, people were just different at that point. So it was just a different time. And then like, that's, our, that's just the tip of the iceberg because they do so many other things in the, so many different other videos that I'm scared. And I, I think that without the internet, we wouldn't know a lot of things that we know today. Um, and I'm just rambling at this point. I don't know if I'm going to cut some of this out because like I've been talking for a long time. Um, but I hope that you understand... What I, this is kind of just like a chat about race, like a race chat. Is that crazy? I don't know. I don't know if people care about this or not. Um, but let me know if you want me to do a more like in-depth conversation about what I, ha what I have learned, right, about the United States and our history and what they didn't teach us in school. So there's, there's even a lot of things that I just like happen to mention on here. And people are like, I never thought, I never heard of that or I never knew that. And I don't know. I, I have trouble now finding the difference between what we do know as a society and what I just know because I've been on TikTok versus like, like is, is it something that my parents would know? I don't know. Um, and there's some things that I thought that other people would know and they do know. So if you want me to go into depth on that, just let me know. Um, and it'll be definitely much more of a, a, a topic video where I'm like, I'm going to go talk about this, 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 and that, um, instead of just me being all over the place. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will see you guys next time. Um, yeah. And the mama sauce was okay. It was pretty good. It was like a little, well, like I said, like a little seven out of 10. Um, I really want them to bring the sweet chili back though. Now, if... You got to the end of this video. Um, hmm. If you got to the end of this video, put tree in the comments. T R E E in the comments. I don't know if a lot of people are going to get to the end of this video. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time with another video. Peace out.